I'm PC Paul Rogers. Um, I'm a police dog handler with Cambridgeshire Constabulary. Um, I've been a police officer for 13 years and I've been a dog handler for nine years this month. I joined the Air Force at 17 and I was a policeman in the RAF and um, quickly became a dog handler with them and I did six years as a dog handler with the RAF. Joined the police and said I'll never work with dogs in the civil police but once I got in the civil police I realised how well they looked after, how well they're trained and the results they get so quickly became interested and applied for the dog section after four years. We've got 16 what we call general purpose police dogs, four of those are Belgian Malinois, the rest being German Shepherds. We've got six drugs, weapons, cash dogs, they sniff out drugs, cash i.e. proceeds of drug dealing and weapons that have been fired, they'll find those and we've got four explosives detection search dogs and 16 handlers. For general purpose police dogs we use German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois and the sniffer dogs we've got Labradors, Cocker Spaniels and Springer Spaniels any of the sort of gun dog breeds they're quite good as long as they love tennis balls yeah everyone's got a general purpose police dog and some have got another specialist dog some of our dogs are paid for by specialist breeders that supply security and police some of our dogs come from pets people are ringing so I've got this dog do you want to come and have a look which is what we'll do see if they're suitable. We've got quite a good relationship with Wood Green Animal Shelter, which is a rescue place. They'll ring us if they've got some German Shepherds in, or gun dog breeds. Since I've been on the unit, we've even worked a couple of dogs that have been found tied to lampposts in Cambridge. It's totally abandoned. They've gone into rescue. We've been contacted and we've picked them up and worked them, given them a great life, so that's nice. We don't like to train a dog that's younger than about 18 months. Reason for that being, Dogs are still growing up until that age. And with our training, we put them through agility. It's quite vigorous when they chase people, try and find people. So you can't sort of subject a young dog's bones to that sort of pressure. So we don't like to try them any younger than that, really. And the length of service they'll give varies, really, but about seven is getting on for a working police dog. We've got the general purpose dogs are all males. I think there's no specific reason for that, it's just that what we found that has been suitable. I'm sure we've got a couple of female sniffer dogs, but it's not an issue either way. When you apply for dog section, you've got to have the right setup at home before you can come onto it because the dogs stay at home with handlers. We've each got a marked police vehicle and that comes home with us with the police dogs and the police dogs generally live in the garden and we get issued kennels, we get issued food. Um, vet bills are paid for by the force um, and the dogs stay at home. They're um, almost pets when they come home, you know, you know family sort of get involved with them. Um, I think it's a great life for a dog because most people when they've got, got pet dogs go to work, leave their dog at home. My dogs are with me 24 hours, where I am they are. So um, it's nice, yeah. The only reason they'll come into the actual dog unit in our kennels is, is if I go on leave go abroad, can't look after them, whereas people would put their dogs in the civilian kennels, we bring our dogs here and the other handlers will look after them. If we talk about the general purpose dogs, we do an initial 13 week course with our instructor here at Alconbury um, and there we teach them tracking, uh, biting, chasing, searching, building searching, looking for property all the things that they'll come across out on as active police dogs and then they get what's called a licence a Home Office approved instructor can licence them which means they can work as a police dog and that's when the real training starts when they go out on the street we're constantly training we get two full days a month at the very least to train the dogs and we do a week long refresher course every six months so we're always training you saw me put diesel over what we call an A-frame and a three foot jump you just to simulate garden fences and getting them over different obstacles to track people, to find people. Obviously agility for a police dog is quite important and we do train in it. Diesel's a new dog, hence I started with him on the lead, then progressed to off the lead. He enjoys it, uh, agility's not a problem for him. 
The cars are issued by the police are air conditioned for the police dogs. The cages that are within the vehicles have got air conditioning pumped into them. We've got a facility on the vehicle which means if we're at a job and we might be there for a while, we can leave the engine running, take the key out, lock the vehicle and leave the air conditioning on which means the dogs, even on blistering hot days, are nice and cool. So uh, it's just a nice, nice peace of mind. One Labrador, Charlie, who was originally a stray. We picked him up from uh, Wood Green um, at 12 months old. <coughs> he was found on the streets, I think in Hertfordshire, just wandering around. Um, we took him and developed him into a drugs, cash and weapons dog. And he's subsequently retired, obviously, as you can tell by his portly shape, um, and he's loving it. He worked with me for eight years, and dare I say, was very good at what he did. He found um, an awful lot of drugs. Um, his best cash fine was in the region of half a million pounds. Um, but quite often, it's not the, the big stuff, it's the little stuff where find one little bit stuck in the back of a car vent or somewhere that's well hidden that's quite pleasing. Um, and say so he was very good at what he did. And to say he's, um, he's now putting his paws up and living the life of Riley at home, because you know they all come home with us, they all live at home, and obviously when they retire we get the choice of whether we want to keep them or not. Apart from the money, he said one of the biggest finds was quite early on his career in a garden shed, under the floorboards of a garden shed, wrapped up in what I could best describe as cling film. In Tupperware boxes was a large quantity of cannabis, um, and he managed to stick his nose through all the rubbish that was in the shed, as it's all in everyone's garden sheds, um, to get to the floor, to scratch the floor, and then obviously researched and found <coughs> subsequent drugs, which was very nice. Um, and obviously, it's part of his little charm, we go and do talks to various groups, whether it be schools or young farmers or WI. WI is his favourite because they always supply tea and cakes, and being a Labrador, he doesn't like to have a little nibble and um, all the ladies were very impressed and would quite happily give him little tidbits of cake. What they failed to mention to me was at the back of the room where we were talking were all the cakes all laid out. So of course as I let him off to wander around the room to say hello to everybody, he thought I went, hmm, cakes, and took himself probably to the back of the room and I think managed to pinch one before someone got hold of him. Mm -hmm.